morning. We're back out, back out with my lad on another adventure in the Lake District. Uh, yeah, we was out two weeks ago at Angleton, and uh, we're back out same area, Pike Near Brothers Water again, and we're going to try and find the elusive priest hole and do a camp up in the, around the Fairfield area but we don't know where yet but we're going to bag a few Wainwrights on the way Dove Crag, Hart Crag and Hart Sop above Howe I think they might be on Fairfield itself if we can so just spin you around so we, we hope I haven't done this area at all so I don't know where I'm going uh, Oof, it's up there somewhere and the priest hall is up there somewhere but we've just cut through side side farm that wind's fairly strong already it's forecasting uh, possible 50 mile an hour gusts where the wind speed is possibly going to peak at about 40 so we think we will need find somewhere sheltered. We shall have a look. Right, let's crack on. What a gorgeous day. We're headed, once you go over the bridge, we're headed up this track. Uh, gorgeous. But it is windy already down here. I'm hoping that's because the wind's blowing down the valley and just circling round down here. And tomorrow's route back, that must be Hearts up above how sort of that way, somewhere. And the priest hole's got to be up, up there somewhere. But apparently the closer you get to it, the harder it is to see it, so people walk past it. This has got to be one of the nicest ascents I've done in a long time. The sunshine definitely helps. Yeah, such a nice walk up. I'm saying that now, we're not up there. We're gonna get our water and all at the last possible opportunity. So we're not lugging three litres up. We've just got enough to drink and then we're gonna have to, to filter the rest. How clear is that? That's gorgeous. Made it. 
the pre-stall very <laughs> uninspiring to be fair it's probably 10 foot in 20 foot across perhaps but a very nice view Don't slip, does. Oh my word. Oh my giddy aunt. Ah, touch your vertigo there. Ah, you get off here. Ah. made it up to the top of Fairfield it's really busy on the summit so we've come out of the way people eating butties at the top we're deciding where to camp we're not going to camp up here we're going to go we're going to backtrack find somewhere on the way back Got striding edge over there Elf Ellen dolly wagon the course to course path comes through the valley down there into Patterdale. That's our route home tomorrow. Little bits of snow. Still on north facing ridges. Tough going. I'm still carrying my Christmas belly as well. Not got rid of that. There's people walking up uh, to St. Sunday's Crag. Camped just the other side of that. That's a good spot. It's brilliant. Very nice. I'll try and keep out of the wind. Another thing I've noticed with this tent compared to the Actor is the inner just seems, I don't know, it just, it's not taut. You know, it, it almost looks like it needs something to pull the bottom out or the inner's too big to fit in the inside. Let's open up. See if you look, it's all kind of floppy. All just like it it needs to be taut. Like it, it's wanting something to pull that. Keep that out and pull the corners in more, but the, the corners are fully in. As, as far as they'll go, so I don't know. Compared to the Acto, the Acto seems to be much more tart inside. I don't know, maybe.
maybe I'm setting it up wrong. Yeah, I've played some of the audio back and the wind noise, it's horrific again and I thought this microphone would cure that. <coughs> but uh, obviously not, so you'll have to send me apologies. Right, that's my tent up. I'm not uh, very quick at it yet, very good. The thing is, I can put the actor up in minutes, literally. This takes a lot longer. Well, obviously, there's three pulls <coughs> and not one. So, I'll show you my quilt. What I've done, I brought the... Is it the Coro quilt? I can't remember now, not had it out for a while, the Thermarest Thermarest something or other, what does it say it? Yeah, the Chorus and it's supposed to be good to minus six, well that's a limit they reckon comfort is zero no way I'd be happy sleeping in that in zero so what I've done I've got a cheap down quilt off the net and I've attached it to the underneath and I've sewn on some press studs on the loops and put the press studs to the fitting here as well so I should, should be warm enough we shall see Got my clean clothes for tonight. Always sleep in dry, clean top clothes, thermals, socks. And I'll leave the clean top and socks on tomorrow to walk down. So that's my tent. <coughs> and from really expensive tents to little bargains, £1.99 that is. And it's a little uh, heat mat. Weighs 40 grams, silicon, just to put your pot on or whatever hot. £1.99 delivered, eBay. Little silicon mat. I don't need to put a link up, you just look at the pictures, you'll come across these dead easy on eBay. <coughs> Sam's got the Pipe Dream 400 from Elk Kit, that's rated the same. And I've done the same for him because that's basically what I'd call a uh, late spring, early, late summer bag. And he's got the quilt that he's put inside as well. And he's got change into his thermals already. And he's on the Thermarest X Lite. And just one of them foil mats underneath. They help protect the mat in case there's anything sharp as much as anything else. And if it goes down in the night, at least you've got something underneath you. Cool. More room in here, Sam. By far, more room. Mm. Yeah. I love my actor tent. I do. Well, folks, disaster. I've got a leak in my ear. In my sleeping pad. So, yeah, it's going down, slowly, but it's going down, and I pumped it up, and I can't find the leak, it must be only a very small hole, so it's going to be an interesting night, to say the least, <sighs> this is what I was saying about having a backup, I've got my, this foil, <coughs> the foil sheet, and Sam's going to give me his. So I'll have two of these foil sheets. And we're going to put the sit pads under as well. <coughs> and uh, all my spare claws. But yeah, it's going down slowly. And I don't know how, because it was fine last time I used it. <coughs> and it's only been heard off and packed away. But I can't find, I can't hear a leak or feel a leak.
It's not like they're cheap, neither, these mats. In fact, I damaged it first time. I think was it the first time I used it. I've done a repair, but it's a cracking repair. That I'm 100% sure that's not the problem. <coughs> what it was in the actor, the door, the zip on the door, the door flapped inside the tent. And as I entered the tent and put, I think I put my elbow on the mat, well, it caught the zip and pressed the zip into the mat. And that was in the actor. <coughs> you can't do it in this tent because the zips nothing will fall onto the uh, onto the inside whereas in the actor your door flops inside and if you was to press on the zip on the teeth of the uh, on the yeah the teeth of the zip press it into the mat <coughs> and it ripped it mm. yeah so I'll have to get that in the bath to see where the air's coming from and see if I can get get it fixed. If if not, it's uh, an expensive job. Morning campers. What a night last night was. Uh, there's the offending mat. Useless. I slept on two of them cheap file mats. So obviously it wasn't wasn't the comfiest or the warmest. And the wind was howling through last night, gusting through. It said on the forecast it was going to be up to 40 mile an hour gusts, and I bet it worked far off that. I don't think. Or 50 mile an hour gusts. I don't think it was that. It was. I reckon it was a good 40. Oh yeah, good. It felt like it was lifting the tent at times. It felt like the ground was shaking. Oh, but we've made it to the morning anyway. So I'm gonna have this coffee, and then we're gonna pack up. Oh, yeah. The sleeping bag and quilt would have worked a treat, but unfortunately, obviously, you lose most of your heat and it's drawn out through the ground. So, although I wasn't freezing, it was cool. But yeah, I'll definitely try this combination again. I didn't sell these quilts as well. Uh, the make was Black Diamond. I got them from off, off eBay, and when I got them, they were only cheap, like £30, and like everything else, once they think, oh yeah, they're in demand, price goes up, but everything's gone up anyway. So I think they're more like £40 plus pound now, but it's cheaper than buying, you know, another sleeping bag if you can boost the one you've got. So that is good. Yeah. Uh, tents full of condensation. But it, it has temperatures really dry. I say full, it's just, it's, yeah, it's damp. Uh, yeah. Let's see it. Let's see that. If I, uh, man, Joe just made a brew as well. Yeah, a bit of a tip. Yeah, these, uh, I found these solo tents a lot smaller than the Actor ones, although I couldn't do this in the Actor. I couldn't sit up like this unless I watch myself to the middle. But I think I've missed the sunrise. Let's stick you outside so you can have a look. I suppose. Oh well. Best for the tents last night. It was rough. I've not had it that rough for a long time. And it was really 
you know, gusty rough. Uh, uh, we'll get this coffee down us and we'll be off. It's half past four. Not four. What's up with my words at today? Half past uh, six. That MSR canister stand, the, the wider one, much better. So rough in here. Yeah, it's much better that one. It's the one it comes with. It's, I brought it by mistake. That one, that's the one it comes with. And to be honest, there's only a few grams weight difference. Yeah. A lot smaller, but it fits in the part where that one doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Where are we? I don't know if you can see this with the light in here. Let's have a look. Yeah, so we parked at uh, Brothers Water, walk up through the campsite, follow the track, all the way up here. It's absolutely gorgeous, this bit of section of walk, past the waterfall, and then we did the pre-store, but we lost quite a bit of time and energy looking for that, because we made a mistake most people do we cut off too early because there is a few like false tracks where people have gone looking for it so you tend to follow them but you don't you, you're practically at the top when you cut off to go to that pre-stall and anyway, we did that then we come up to the top we did uh dove crag and turn back on ourselves to Dark Crag and then this looks like a nice straight walk, it's not, it's up and down uh, bagged Fairfield and due to the, the forecast of the winds we thought we'd come head start heading back, lower down so we came back, all up and down again back to Hart Crag but then we turned off down here heading towards Hearts up above how but we stopped and camped at this Blake Brow that's where we are now so this morning we're going to carry on bag that last one that's, that's four in the bag I'm going to come down here follow that ridge where are we? Oh, it's not on that yeah. Follow that ridge, yeah, you can just see it. Follow the ridge, and then it cuts down, just cuts across through the woods, then back on itself, and then just retrace our steps. Overall, that's a, a 10 mile walk, overall. And something like three and a half thousand feet in elevation. So not a bad, not a bad little wild camp at all. Right, catch you later. That's us done. The obligatory leave no trace. I was here, Sam was there. Uh, oh, battery's flashing at me already. That's a new battery in. Well, that's the last one. That's up above how. So that's four in the bag. And even though in comparison we are very low compared to uh, Dove Crag and Heart Crag, we camp just over there. So in comparison, we're low, but when you look, it's still high.
Right, that might be it. We'll see. Uh, 